Are you a Mac or a PC? Hello, I'm a Mac. And I'm an incredibly easy to use PC. Or maybe you're having an identity crisis and you're not sure. Ask how he made it. Well, you don't care about arts and crafts. You like work. Would it hurt you to loosen your necktie every once in a while and have a little fun? So let me help you decide. If you're in the market for a new work laptop or you need to buy new desktops or laptops for your company, there are so many things to consider, like price, security, compatibility, processing power, and much more. It can be hard to even know where to start. But making the wrong choice can turn out to be an expensive mistake that you're going to have to live with for years to come. Russell here, editorial director of Petri.com in this life and IT consultant in a previous one. Now, one of the great things about the new Mac M1s and M2s is that at the same price point, they outperform PCs. So if you do decide that you want Windows, you're going to have to pay quite a bit more in order to get the same power out of that device. Another thing is software and hardware compatibility. If you have maybe a legacy Windows business app, it's not going to run on Mac OS unless you start getting into the world of virtualization. But it swings the other way as well. Maybe if you want to run Apple software like Final Cut Pro or Apple Motion, then that's not going to run on a Windows PC. And of course, a lot of the new Macs don't really have a whole load of port options. So for instance, if you need several USB-C ports, Ethernet, maybe an SD card reader, you have to get the more expensive Macs. If you want that kind of extensibility, then PCs give you a much wider range of options in terms of the hardware that you're going to buy. So if you're traveling a lot or if you're away from home, then power efficiency is going to be something that you want to consider. Now one of the things about the new M1 and M2 Max is that they have amazing battery life. One of the advantages of ARM is you've got pretty much the same performance regardless of whether it's plugged into a power outlet or whether you're running on battery. So if you need to do something that's processor hungry but you're also not near a power outlet, ARM based Macs really offer a better alternative over current PC hardware. There's a certain amount of integration with Microsoft 365 in Windows that you don't get on Mac OS. So for instance, the search capabilities in Windows are integrated with Microsoft 365, so you can search your own cloud data and your organizational cloud data. Also, the new search highlights feature is also compatible with your organization's Microsoft 365 subscription, so it will automatically offer up useful information that you might need to access on a regular basis. There are also other things in Windows that you can't do on any other operating system. For instance, you can actually join your device to Azure Active Directory, which can provide easier access to corporate resources. And there are other things like Windows Hello for Business and a few things like passwordless login to a device or biometric login, and it's all compatible with your organization's security policy. Windows, of course, has a bit of a bad reputation in terms of security and viruses, but really over the last five or six years, Microsoft has done an amazing job at making Windows more secure. So for instance, Windows Windows 11, at least if you get it on a new device, the drive is encrypted by default, you need to have a trusted platform module, and all of the features that Microsoft has built in and turned on by default should help to make the device more secure. The built-in antivirus also works really well, so you don't necessarily need to pay for something extra. So I know there's always the argument, well, you don't need antivirus on a Mac and everything's much better. Of course, there are viruses for Mac OS. It's long gone are the days where there were no viruses for Mac. At least at this point in time, you know, it probably is true that you need to worry about security a little bit less on Mac. But if you follow security best practices and don't do anything really silly, then I think Windows can also be a secure option. So if you or your organization need to manage the device, then Windows is just more manageable. It was designed really for organizations to be able to have complete control over it if they need to. Uh, of course, there are varying levels of control that an organization might choose to take. Now some of the problems with this that I've come across or I've heard about recently is that people are choosing Mac OS for work sometimes because they don't want the organizational management of the device. So if your organization is running out poorly set up Windows images or they're loading on loads of security agents that really slow the device down, then of course this can really harm your productivity if you're having to deal with those issues that that can cause all of the time. Now because Mac OS is just less manageable, you don't necessarily have those issues. If your company is using modern management for Windows, then things are a lot better because probably they're not using an image as such. Maybe they're using Windows Autopilot and just modifying slightly 
the default image that comes with the device that was configured by the manufacturer. And those images are usually very well tested and stable. So usability and productivity are also important. Now, in my opinion, Mac OS is great, of course. I'm not against Mac OS, but it is a little bit basic and primitive in some ways compared to Windows. You don't really have uh, an equivalent to Windows Snap Assist in Mac OS when you're using the task switch. You don't get app previews. Now, there are some third party applications you can install on Mac OS to kind of bridge those features, but you don't really want to have to be managing third party applications. And it's not until those features have gone, you'll really miss how they improved your workflow. It's those little things that Microsoft pays attention to in productivity that help to make it easier to use Windows. Now, if you want more information on the productivity differences between Mac OS and Windows, Sarah Dici has a really good video. It's about a year and a half old at this point, so I don't know, some things may have changed in Mac OS, but I think it's a really good video for somebody who doesn't use Mac OS on a regular basis, really highlighted some things that I really never thought about in terms of the differences between the two operating systems and how you would use them every day. Okay, so you need to now actually make a decision between buying a PC and a Mac, and it's not clear cut. You know, there are pros and cons on both sides, of course. Now, if you don't need Windows, if you don't want Windows, then I think it's really a bit of a no-brainer to go out and buy, you know, for a thousand dollars a MacBook Air. You know, for the average office worker who maybe needs to run some applications in a browser, then I don't think you can really go wrong with the entry-level M1 or M2. They really do give you great value between price and performance. But if you just prefer Windows or you need the additional security and manageability features of Windows, then, well, that's fine. You're going to have to pay more to get the same level of performance if performance is important to you. And, of course, Windows PCs are just compatible with a wider range of software and hardware so you will have less problems in getting stuff to run and getting devices connected to your PC. If you're a developer or a designer you may already be in the Mac ecosystem and you know, potentially, especially if you're a designer, there may not be many advantages for you to moving over to Windows. If you're a developer, well, it really depends on whether you need access to Unix or not. If you're going to use Windows, you've got the Windows subsystem for Linux, which has been really successful and really popular with developers, but there are some limitations to it. If you need to be able to access USB connected devices via the subsystem for Linux, then that can be a bit of a problem. You know, there are some issues with it, depending depending on what you want to do. And finally, Windows is better integrated with Microsoft 365, so if you're all in on that solution, then maybe Windows is a better option. If you want to run the Office desktop suite applications as well, you always get the greatest and latest features. The Mac versions of Office never quite have feature parity, so there will be some things missing. If you're using Office desktop apps and you decide to go with Mac, that you're gonna have all of the features in those applications that you need. So I hope this video was useful and it gives you some ideas of the pros and cons of both PCs and Macs and helps you to make the right decision. If you found the content valuable, then please give it a like. And if you'd like to see similar videos from Petri, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna leave you with two videos on the screen that you might also find useful, so please do check them out. But that's it from me and I'll see you next time.